One of the most common things you will want to do with Maptitude is create a map using your data. Whether you store your data in Microsoft Excel, Access, SQL Server, or any ODBC compliant data source, Maptitude can work with your data. Create a Map Wizard gives you start to end assistance for mapping your data. For example, this customer spreadsheet has address and sales data that can be used in several ways. I'll start by clicking the New Workspace button to open the Home window and choose New Map of My Data Table Spreadsheet. I'll call my new workspace My Data Analysis and click OK. Maptitude prompts you for the file that contains the data. In this case, my customer data is in an Excel spreadsheet, so I'll choose the file and click Open. And click OK to use the data on the My Customer Sheet in the Excel file. Here you can verify the fields that can be used for mapping. These are correct, so I will click Next. And now I can choose how to use the data. Note, the types of maps that you can create will depend on the fields in your data and the country package you have installed. This option will allow me to aggregate the customer data by postal code and create maps that, for example, show the number of customers in each postal code or the total or average sales for each postal code. Choose whether to import the data from Excel or to link it to the Excel file. I will choose to link the data so that I can refresh the map with the sales data in my Excel file that change regularly. And I'll click Next. Choose whether to create a theme on the postal codes using your data. In this case, let's make a color theme showing the total second quarter sales for each zip code. When I click Finish, Maptitude displays a map illustrating the total second quarter sales in each zip code. You can see that postal codes with high sales totals are shown with darker green color, and postal codes where sales are lower are shown in pale yellow and green. All of your aggregated data are available to map, not just the second quarter sales that I chose in the Create a Map wizard. For example, if I click the Color Theme button, I can choose to map the number of customers, the total first quarter sales, the average first quarter sales, etc. I'm going to choose this field to change the map to show the number of customers in each postal code. And now I'm going to add a bar chart theme showing the change in sales over the two quarters. I'll click the Chart Theme button, choose the Quarter 1 Sales and Quarter 2 Sales fields, choose the Bar Chart option here, and click OK. Maptitude adds the theme to the map. Let's zoom in to see the downtown area. You can see that there were many customers and sales were high and increased in this zip code, and there are fewer customers and sales also decreased in this zip code. Next, I want to create a map that shows exactly where all of my customers are located. At this point, I could save and close the workspace and start over in a new blank workspace as I did earlier. Alternatively, I can add the customers to this existing map or to a second map in this workspace. To do that, choose Map, Add Table Spreadsheet to a map, and again choose the Excel file and worksheet that contain the customer data, but this time choose one of the Locate options. I want to locate my customers with as much precision as possible, so I'm going to choose this top option. Maptitude will try to locate all my customers by address, and then for any records that they cannot find by address, Maptitude will do its best to find a good approximate location. I could add the customers to this existing map by leaving this box checked, but I want to create a second map in my workspace, so I'll uncheck it and click Next. Again, I can choose whether to import or link the data to the map. I can link the data to the map provided that each record has a unique ID, which I do, so I'll specify it here, and click Next. Here I can choose whether to show the customers with a theme. For example, I could show them with different sizes based on their sales, or I could show them with different symbols or colors based on their sales territory. I'm going to show the customers with a color theme based on their sales territory, and click Next. Here I can choose whether to perform any analysis on the features. For example, if you're looking at retail sites, you may want to build buffers around them to study the surrounding area. Or if you're locating customers, you may want to find hotspots where they are concentrated. In this example, I'm going to determine the area that encompasses the customers and its weighted center based on sales. Maptitude reports the number of records in the Excel file that were located. 
Notice that it shows that there were 4,509 records in the Excel file, and Mapitude was able to find the address and zip code of 4,466 of those records. An additional 7 may have had incorrect zip code data, but Mapitude was able to find the address in nearby zip codes. And another 2 had no zip code information, but Mapitude was able to find them using the address and city. Mapitude could not find 34 of the addresses. Perhaps they were P.O. boxes, or they just listed the name of a building or shopping center, or perhaps they simply had incorrect information. Maptitude located these records at approximate locations within their respective zip codes. I'll go ahead and close the report, and now Maptitude displays the map of customers with a color theme showing their sales territory and the weighted center and encompassing area. All of the original Excel data are still associated with the customer features. So I can, for example, add a size theme that also shows each customer's sales. I'm going to use the Zoom In tool and zoom in on Denver. And if I use the Info tool and click on any of the customers, I can see information about their name, address, sales, and territory. The last thing to do now that I've mapped my data to these two maps is, of course, save the workspace. And that sums up how to map your own data in Maptitude.